Hi brothers and sisters, this is for anyone, if you were like me, um, I used to struggle with sin a lot. Um, to the outside, it looked like I was a really strong, good Christian. I've been a Christian my whole life, but I would still stumble and fall often and fight with my family or get into bitterness or all kinds of things. Um, and I wondered why it was that case. And it wasn't until I went to a cabin in the woods for a month for about 30 days of just seeking God with all my heart. I got rid of TV, internet, you know, anything that would detract me. And I just saw after God listened to his word all day for so many days, I mean, hours and hours and hours a day. Went through the whole New Testament four times in a row, just um, reading, listening, reading, listening, sitting in prayer, spending time with the Lord for a whole month and getting rid of the things of the world. And I came out of that like a brand new person. I mean, I was so free and I've been walking in such freedom since then by God's power, not by anything in me. It was by God's power when I, I even though I had been a, a follower of Jesus my whole life, a missionary kid, uh, someone who grew up in church and Christian schools, and I had loved the Lord, you know, but there was still some kind of sin that would tug at me, whether fighting with my family or sadness or depression when a, a medical issue hit my life and um, I lost everything that, yeah, anyways, so all these things started happening to me, and it wasn't until that month in the woods with the Lord that I came out as a brand new person. And when I say brand new person, the Lord just did a mighty work in me. It was like, and he does this in all his children. Anyone who will fully, fully die to self, fully repent from all sin, just fully seek him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. He makes you a brand new creature, a brand new person. The Bible says that we're freed from sin. I came out where nothing could even scare me anymore. Fear had been wiped away completely. Even someone in the middle of the night, sounding like they're going to break into my house. Before that would terrify me. Now, I came out of that month of prayer and fasting and realizing, holy cow, nothing can affect me. I feel so free, so filled with joy, so filled with peace, so filled with love, that even people could scream in my face, and I would still look at them in such love. I would just be like, oh, man. You know, in my heart, I'd just be praying for them instead of getting upset and mad like I would before. Now, nothing could get me upset. Nothing could get me mad. It was like um, totally amazing. So I began to ask the Lord, what is it that happened in me and why is it that I didn't have that in me? I seemed like a really good Christian. I had a lot of joy of the Lord my whole life, but I still had sin. It was like a pendulum swing where you'd, you would um, be in sin and then you'd repent and turn away. And then you'd sin again and repent and turn away. It was a pendulum swing. But the word says we should be freed from sin. And so many verses saying you're a new creature. Paul says it's no longer I that live but Christ in me. Um, just so many verses saying even in 1 John, I believe it's 3, 9. It says if you're born of God, you won't sin. You won't continue in sin because you can't. You're born of God. His seed remains in you. Uh, Hebrews 10, 26 says if you continue in deliberate sin after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there's no longer any sacrifice that covers your sin. Um in, I believe it was Matthew, Jesus says, Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, only those who do the will of my Father. And on that day, many will come to me, saying, I did all these miracles in your name. I cast out demons. And he'll reply, I never knew you. Depart from me, workers of sin, workers of lawlessness or iniquity. So all these things, if we're in sin, leads to death. And there's a freedom from sin that's possible that gives life abundant. Okay? So I began to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to understand what happened in me, the good work that you did in me. I thought I was saved my whole life, but this is radically different. This is a new kind of freedom, a new kind of peace, joy, and love um, where I'm not even tempted to sin anymore, where sin um, makes me literally want to vomit. I won't watch TV. I won't watch corrupt shows. I won't listen to secular music. I won't want anything of the world. I won't even wear makeup anymore. 
uh, anything that the world has to offer now makes me sick. I said, wow, you've done an amazing work in me. Can you tell me what it is so I can help others understand it too? And so he began to teach me and guide me using the scriptures and the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit reveals us to all truth. Um, so through the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, He'll reveal incredible things to you that you might not hear in a sermon or a teacher, but um, the Christians of old knew it. It's just over thousands of years people have um, fallen away from it. It's very few Christians that hold to it now. So anyway, so this is kind of how you can tell. I wrote it down in a picture to help understand I did this in a previous video, but I didn't quite explain it right, um, and the picture was really bad, so people didn't really understand what I was saying, I don't think. So anyways, alright, so I'm going to show you the two things. First, this comes from uh, a lot of places in the Bible, but we're going to talk specifically about Galatians 6, kind of explains it. Galatians 6, 8 says, uh, hopefully I can quote it right, it says, if you sow into your flesh. Oh, it says, don't be deceived. God can't be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he shall reap. So whatever you sow, whatever seeds you put inside of you, you will reap it. It says either you can sow into your flesh and reap destruction, or you can sow into your spirit and reap life, eternal life. So there's two places where seeds can go. And depending on if you sow into your flesh or your spirit will be either destruction or death. So, the reason most Christians are still in sin and bondage is because they haven't fully gone through this process. Okay? I'll do kind of an overview, and then I'll do it more specifically. So, this is the option if you sow into the flesh. Okay? And those things, the seed that you put inside of you, are words of the devil, basically. They're things like information you get from TV, from secular music, from uh, preachers that are speaking false things, they all lead to lies. So you sowed into your flesh, it led to lies, fear, which brought you to sin, and then leads to a kind of a death where you have a lot of depression and brokenness, which ultimately leads you to hell, okay? But what we're called to do as Christians is to cut out the seeds of the devil if anyone loves the world or the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in them because friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. That's what the Bible says. So we should be cutting out the things of the world, the seeds of the devil, uh, which are the things we learn in TV, internet, music. This is why when I went to the cabin in the woods for a month and I cut these things out, I found a radical change in my life. Because you can't have both. Okay, so here's the other option. The word of God, you can sow into your spirit. Instead of sowing into your flesh with TV, music, entertainment, start sowing into your spirit, cutting out the flesh, sow into your spirit. And this is done by reading the word of God and by sitting in your prayer closet for like an hour a day or however much you're willing to do. Um, but it starts with knowing the word of God, reading the word of God for yourself, not trusting what Mr. Pastor, Mr. Theologian, and Mr you know, seminary teacher, whoever it is, don't believe what they have to say about the Word of God. Just go read it for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit teach you because almost every pastor is preaching something absolutely false. Um, anyway, sadly. And you'll see that the more that you read this the, for yourself, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal to you um, all the lies that you've been taught, that you've actually been thinking you're learning from the Lord, but actually you're going from false pe preachers that are leading you to lies and bondage. So go to the Word of God yourself, learn it yourself, go from Matthew to Revelation, Matthew to Revelation, Matthew to Revelation, and then when you've gotten that down, also you can do the Old Testament too. But especially since we're in the New Covenant, learn Matthew to Revelation um, really well. Anyways, because Paul, Peter, James, John, they all deal with this exact issue, and that's why I have so many verses on here. Okay. So if you start sowing into your spirit, you'll see you'll suddenly have an increase of faith and truth is being born in you. So you put that little seed of reading the word of God into your spirit. 
and it starts to grow. Now it's a little seedling. This is step two, okay? It leads you to repentance. This is repentance. It is through, it is by grace we have been saved through faith. See that? So you have to go through faith by grace. Okay, so you're in this process. It all starts with the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So it all starts with the word of God in you. You got to increase the seeds of the world of, of the Lord that you're putting in you and cancel out, cut off the seeds of the devil, the TV, music, entertainment, all this stuff that belongs to the evil one. This all belongs to the evil one. Don't put the words of the devil in you or in your kids. It just will lead you to sin and destruction. If you're in sin and destruction, depression, brokenness, hurt, uh, sin, lust, it's because you can trace it right back to the lies you were told through the TV and internet. You say, oh, this TV doesn't affect me. Yes, it does. Absolutely. Secular music doesn't affect me. Yes, it does. Absolutely. It's it's putting little seeds inside of you that will bear thorns and destruction. Okay, but back to here. So now you started in the Word of God, and you're learning the Word of God, and it's starting to do a great work in you. See, this is why the Word of God is called this, the Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And it's sharper than any two-edged sword, because guess what it does? It's like a sharp sword that will cut these lies that you put inside of you from before, now this sword of the word of God will start cutting down these lies and showing you, look, that preacher that you heard is actually a false preacher. He's not from the Lord. He's not freed from sin. So he's teaching you a bunch of lies. So here's the word of God going to come and smash those lies. The more lies that are implanted in you, a lot of times, the longer this process takes of reading the word of God and being free from the lies and realizing, wow, the truth sets me free. The truth sets me free. Where do you get the truth? From the Word of God and from sitting in prayer. All right, so you're in this process. This process, it takes different for every person, okay? For a lot of people, it might take a very short amount of time, but for people like Charles Spurgeon, Oswald Chambers, um, Wesley, they all talk about this process taking a long time before they were truly set free and born again, they said. It took years for a lot of them. Um, these are the fathers of our, of our uh, faith, a lot of them. Anyways, so, okay, and they talk about this process too. All right, so the Word of God will lead you to repentance, okay? If you're still holding on to sin, you have to go back to the Word of God, which will lead you, the Holy Spirit leading you to repentance. And this is done through Jesus, by his blood, by his power. We repent, we turn away from sin. We repent, we turn away from sin. We seek, 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 until he'll get us to a place where we're willing to have a full surrender. Full surrender. He says, if you want to follow me, you must first deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. That's what Jesus said. You can't be my disciple unless you deny yourself. You have to fully surrender. You have to die to the self. Die to your flesh. Renouncing the world. Um, friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God, the Bible says. He says, uh, Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, sell all you have, give to the poor, then come follow me. He says that to the rich young ruler in Matthew 9, 21. Uh, sorry, 19, 21. You have to pick up his cross, your cross, and follow him. So if you're not at this point of fully surrendering, where you're willing to sell all you have and give to the poor, where you're willing to give up everything for the Lord and even to die for the Lord, then you haven't gone through this process enough. You need to keep doing it. And this is our whole lives. We're constantly reading the Word of God, so you never stop reading the Word of God, um, of course. But this process, I'm telling you how to be truly free from sin. This is what the Lord shows us. You have to see, put the seeds. Now remember, we're saved by grace through faith. Grace through faith, by Christ's blood. In his love, he, while we were lost and in sin, he sent his son while we were still sinners to die for us so that we could have freedom from sin. So his blood washes us clean, repent, all these things. So we repeat until we have a victory given to us by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he's capable of keeping us from falling and presenting us perfect and spotless on that day. So Jesus is capable of freeing us from all sin by his power where we won't even have temptation to sin. Uh, when I say that, I mean we won't even have that desire to sin. That temptation will still be there, but we, 
like sin makes us sick now. If you're a new creature, born of God, transformed, the Holy Spirit within you, then you're not going to be led by the flesh. You're led by the Spirit. So sin isn't appealing to you anymore. It makes you sick if you've been truly born of God. Okay. And that's what Paul talks about a lot. All right. So now when you're at this place of full surrender, truly given up your sin, truly repented, gone through this process where he begins to unpeel um, all those layers of sin around you until it's just you underneath to fully surrender to him, where you're giving up everything, no matter what he calls you to, you're fully surrendered, then you end up going through this process where you're born again or born of the Spirit. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you're being born again is an instant process. Okay, it's not an instant process for everybody. If you have a ton of lies, a ton of sin you need to surrender, it's going to be probably a longer process that until you get to the point of you're willing to give up all your sin and fully surrender. For some people, it might be instant. They might be like, I am going to give up all my sin and fully surrender in this moment, and they made that choice completely. Then they can be have this freedom from sin immediately. It depends. So just how much you're willing to surrender is how fast this process takes. Because um, you're the only limiting factor. If you're only willing to give God 90% of you, then you're not fully going to be reborn because you haven't given him all of you. If you're only going to give up 80% of sin, you're not going to be reborn. Now, before you go and jump and say, it's the Bible says, uh, believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou will be saved. Yep. To that word believe in actually means to trust, follow, and obey them. So even then, it means we got to obey Jesus, fully surrender to him um, completely. It's all over the Bible. We have to completely, fully surrender to the Lord. We cannot die holding on to any sin. If you die holding on to sin... It's literally like it's glued to your soul. You haven't let Jesus wash you clean of that sin because you're holding on to it. So now you're going to have to be destroyed with that sin and sent to hell because no sin can enter heaven. He says, don't be deceived. No, no liars, no adulterers, no fornicators will ever enter the kingdom of God. And he wrote that to people that were following Jesus. So it does depend on what you're willing to give up. You have to get to a point where you're willing to surrender all. And you have to dwell in this. You can't say, I'm going to fully surrender and then go right back to putting the words of the devil in you and going to lies and leading you to sin. Because the wages of sin is death. When we get to this point of repentance, we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. It's not this instant moment in time, now forever, no matter what you do or say, now you're saved. That's not true. Sin, the wages of sin is death. The Bible says over and over and over, if you're truly born of God, you're not going to continue in sin. It says that in Hebrews and James, Peter talks about it. Um, all kinds of places. All right. So we have to get to a place of full surrender. And the cross, repentance, gets us to that place, okay? Seeking the Lord on our knees. If you're not really seeking the Lord on your knees every day in prayer and reading his word, then you're not ever going to get to full surrender. You're not ever going to be reborn because you're still holding on to some sin and still holding on to your flesh. How can you be freed from sin if you're still holding on to it? You have to open your hand and ask the Lord to free you. Truly. Okay? All right, you get to a place of full surrender. This is like the parable. Sorry, I keep stopping. This is like, I want to clarify some things. This is like the parable Jesus told of the man who had the field. And um, he says, the kingdom of God is like this. There's a man who is in the field and he sees a bunch of treasure in the field. So he runs home and he sells all he has. So he gives up, he gets to full surrender. He sells all he has, takes all his money together and buys that field so that he can have the treasure. You see that? So he couldn't have the treasure until he gave up everything else he had. Does that make sense? It's the same thing Jesus told to the rich young ruler. If you want to be perfect, sell all you have. Give to the poor. Then come follow me. It's the same thing he said to everybody who was like, 
oh, Lord, I want to follow you, but first let me go bury my father. He goes, uh-uh, let the dead bury their own dead. Then come follow me. He says, anyone who puts their hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. He says he demands total and full surrender in everything, in all aspects of your life. If you're not at that point, he says, many are going to say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. But those who didn't know him, those who didn't will, do the will of the Father, and those in sin, those are the three things he says that they'll be cast away from him on that day. I believe that's in Matthew. Anyways, okay. Now, once you've gotten to full surrender, you're going to find totally incredible thing. This is what I found after that month in the forest when I was going through this process and got to a point of absolute surrender and he absolutely made me reborn new creature. I understood all these verses made sense to me. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you're a new creature, no longer uh, Galatians 2, 20. It's no longer I that live, but Christ in me. Um, Matthew 7, 16, you'll know them by their fruit. Uh, Hebrews 12, 14, without holiness, none will see God. Matthew 5, 8, the pure at heart will see God. Uh, all the, the um, beautiful fruit of the Spirit. He says, if you don't bear fruit, you get cut off and thrown into the fire. So what's the fruit he talk he's talking about? He says here, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, all these things. Sorry, did I do that right? You get to have the fruit of the Spirit. It starts to take over you. Love, joy, peace aren't an emotion anymore. It's not a pendulum swing anymore. It becomes who you are. This is how you can love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you is because there's a supernatural reborn process that happens where it's no longer you that live but Christ in you. Christ takes over. His love flows out of you. His joy flows out of you. His peace flows out of you. And it doesn't change based on your circumstances or your day. Since this day, I honestly haven't had one bit of loneliness since I was free. Like, I am i don't have family in this city. I don't really have any close friends. But yet, I don't feel lonely. I feel so captivated by the Lord for all these months, um, all this time, that I haven't felt lonely. I haven't felt sad for myself at all. I felt sad for others because I love others. I have the love of Christ in me. But it's like I can't even have the emotions I used to have I how do I get angry at someone it you know how do I get annoyed at people well it's amazing okay so you're in this place you're a citizen of heaven now so how could you have all the experiences of the earth when you're a citizen of heaven you're a new creature uh, Matthew and John, Matthew 3 and John 15, any tree that does not bear fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So this is the fruit that you're bearing. See that? It's amazing and it's beautiful. Um, okay, I only have a short amount of time left. All right. So now we'll talk about real fast. If you are at this point and you decide to reject God and to start filling your mind with the things of the devil, nowhere in scripture does it say once saved, always saved. In fact, it says the opposite all over. And I could disprove once saved, always saved in literally every single book of the New Testament in multiple places. Just read your Bible. You'll see very clearly that's a false teaching. So definitely, if you are reborn, just like Adam and Eve were totally freed from sin, but then they decided to choose sin, and so they spiritually died, okay, this process... If you decide to go back to filling your mind with the things of the devil, the TV, the entertainment, wasting your time, rejecting, you're grieving the Holy Spirit, you're doing all these things, the Bible says don't be deceived, God can't be mocked, whatever a man sows, he'll reap. So if you're sowing into yourself all this junk of the world, you'll get lies in your brain subconsciously at first, you'll be like, subconscious lies, okay, these lies will give birth to sin, lust, drunkenness, immorality, lying, stealing, laziness. Okay, you start to surrender to your flesh. Instead of surrendering to God, you're surrendering to your flesh. Instead of words of God giving birth to truth, it's words of the devil giving birth to lies. You see that? Truth sets us free, but the lies chain us. So get that junk TV out of you. Um, 
junk things to the world. You got to get it out. That's why we have to not be part of the world. The Bible says we have to reject the world um, because friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. You love the people, but you reject the systems of the world because the Bible says Satan is the god of this world. So I reject the systems of this world because I'm a citizen of heaven now. Do you see that? All right, it leads to sin. Um, I believe it's James who talks about this, that the thoughts give birth to the sin that gives birth to the death. So you'll see yourself being in depression, bitterness, hurt, pain, sorrow, loss, uh, apathy, lulled to sleep. This is all because you put the seeds of the devil in you. So you need to go back here, put the word of God in you, give birth to faith and truth, repentance, then full surrender, then you're born of the Spirit. Okay? So you can tell if you're truly saved just by looking at yourself and going, what is my fruit? The Bible says you'll know them by the fruit. So if your fruit is all of this, spiritual death, fear, anxiety, depression, bitterness, hurt, pain, sin, all these things, then you know that you're in a very dangerous place. It leads to destruction, the Bible says. Go to the Lord. If your fruit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, purity, holiness, righteousness, then you and you hate sin and love good, then that shows you're most likely born of God, right? So if you have all this sin in you, go back to the Word of God and begin to get on your knees in your prayer closet and seek the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and get out the words of the devil. Stop listening to the TV, internet, false preachers, and all this junk. Just go straight to the Word of God. Okay, God bless you. Bye. Thanks for listening. Bye.